finally got hold of a, an Amiga 1200. So this is my A1200 setup. And uh, so it's booting up now into Workbench. I just kind of want to talk about it. I'm going to show you guys my setup and the system and um, all the little add-ons and uh, things that I have running for it. So um, yeah, first I want to say um, this is actually the first A1200 setup or A1200 that I've ever actually had. So um, it's kind of like filled a void that I've had for a long time. Um, I uh, have been an Amiga guy pretty much since the start. You know, when I was a kid, uh, my brother and I uh, always wanted one and um, at the time the A1000s had just come out very very expensive um, and uh, I think I was uh, maybe 14 at the time my brother was a little bit older and um, we kind of pulled together any kind of pocket money that we had and convinced our parents to get one I think my brother had just started college and he kind of convinced them that he needed this uh, for school so uh, we ended up getting a uh, an A1000 at the time, and um, that was the first Amiga we ever had. It was uh, just a stock A1000 that had, I think it, it did have the uh, 512 megabytes of memory, so it had an expansion in there, but it was running Kickstart 1.2 of floppy disks, so um, that's uh, going back quite a while. And uh, from there, we um, upgraded, if, uh, if that's the right word to use, to a, an A500. So it had the uh, one megabyte of chip RAM in there, and uh, we got uh, an accelerator board for it. And uh, also, uh, after that point, um, I remember um, my brother, who's uh, an engineering, uh, well, at the time he was an en engineering student, he uh, ended up making a tower case and putting the A1000 into a tower. And uh, it was a really nice project. Uh, he still actually has that uh, back home. So I'd love to actually get a hold of that if I could, but it's uh, obviously easier said than done. And uh, after the uh, 500, I got hold of an A3000, I got it real cheap, and um, I basically, at that point, just expanded the crap out of it. So I dropped in a, uh, at the time it was an 040 warp engine, running at 40 megahertz accelerator board, and I think there was 32 megabytes of memory in there, and uh, I added a dedicated sound card, dedicated graphics card, which I think was a CyberVision 64 3D, which at the time was pretty cool. Um, and also a network card and uh, added a CD burner and uh, just all sorts of any kind of expansion port that I could possibly get hold of I did um, so that was uh, quite good and uh, like I said we still have those Amigas back home in storage I kind of get a little bit nervous thinking about them because I'm sure some of those batteries have now leaked and um, hopefully not destroyed anything, but um, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of those batteries have, have leaked and uh, caused some damage. So um, yeah, maybe one day we'll, uh, I'll get to revisit that. But um, in any case, uh, the A1000, I'm sorry, the A1200 is uh, something I've wanted for a while. Um, it's the last Amiga that was ever created by Commodore. Um, so it's a little bit special in that regard. It has uh, an updated chipset, so there's more colors and the kind of the stock Amigas that runs the AGA chipset as opposed to the ECS. The ECS was a maximum of 32 colors, I believe, um, out of a palette of 4,096. The AGA um, is a, uh, is a, you can have up to 256 colors from a maximum of 16 million. So um, certainly a lot more expanded. There's also an updated processor in there. The Old Amigas were running a 68,000 CPU by Motorola, running at 7.14 megahertz. An A1200 runs a 68020 processor at 14 megahertz. So, um, better performance there, and uh, yeah, just a, just a really cool machine. Um, it's it's a hacker's delight, quite honestly. And I'll show you uh, my setup here in a minute. But uh, what I wanted to show you first was uh, this is my workbench setup, and um, this is running classic workbench. Uh, and, and it's running the OS 3.9 stuff. So OS 3.9 was the last official um, workbench released by Commodore uh, back in the day. Well, actually, it wasn't, it wasn't actually Commodore that, that released 3.9. I think it was Hajim Partner who was uh, licensed uh, by Commodore to release a uh, Mega Workbench. <clears throat> but in any case, this is the workbench that I got. This is a 16 color desktop and it looks really, really nice. And the reason why I'm, I'm running at 16 colors and not 256 is just for speed. Uh, when you start cranking up the uh, the screen modes and the palette uh, number of colors, it does start to slow down significantly. So um, it's almost to the point where it's not usable with 256 colors unless you 
you're doing something specific. But um, we're running, uh, we've got 64 megabytes of fast memory, so we've got an expansion board on this thing, and um, I just wanted to show the uh, sysinfo program and just run the diagnostics and show you uh, what's under the hood here, and then uh, we'll actually crack the machine open and show you uh, what is under the hood. So um, if I go into our sysinfo here, I'm not sure if you can see that very well, so let's just zoom in a little bit. That's a little bit better. As you can see, uh, it's an A1200 and it's running a 68060 at 50 megahertz. Now this obviously has an expansion um, inside of it and uh, basically I acquired a 060 expansion board for this running at 50 megahertz. Now the 060 is the fastest Motorola CPU you can get for the Amigas. Um, I know Amigas eventually went PowerPC and things like that, but um, this is the last um, 68,000 series uh, CPU that was released. So this is the fastest uh, CPU you can get for the Amiga. Now, there have been people, smart people out there that have been managed to overclock their CPUs and things like that. And I've seen people go as high as 100 megahertz, which is uh, just lightning fast uh, as far as Amigas go. Uh, it's almost unheard of really. Mine's are uh, running stock at 50 and um, I can't overclock mine, but uh, I choose not to. I think it's uh, it's, it's, it's it's a dangerous business and um, it's pretty hard to replace a 60. So this is the A1200 itself. Um, it's uh, nice and white. There's really not that much yellowing. Uh, when I actually got this uh, machine, the keyboard itself uh, was quite yellow. So what I did was I ended up replacing the keyboard with a new one from Amiga Kit. Uh, Amiga Kit's actually a very, very good uh, website for Amiga parts where they uh, stock all sorts of different things. So I certainly, certainly recommend those guys. So yeah, as you can see, the keyboard is nice and white. And uh, the case is starting to get a little bit yellow, but certainly nothing to worry about. Uh, it still looks quite good. So yeah, swapped out the keyboard just purely for aesthetic purposes. The old keyboard that I had works fine, but I uh, just wanted to get a nice white looking Amiga. On the side here, we have a um, Linksys wireless card. Now, what's interesting about the A1200 is, I'll pull this out, is there's actually a PCMCIA port in there. So all these kind of um, wireless ethernet cards and wired ethernet cards and other things, um, as long as there's a, an appropriate driver for it, will actually work in a, an Amiga 1200 and also the A600 as well, which had the PCMCIA slot. Um, I've seen external compact flash adapters um, with uh, compact flash cards that are formatted as FAT32 so you can easily transfer back and forth from an Amiga to a PC, get your files across and things like that. Uh, I've, also, I've seen all sorts of different PC MCIA solutions. Um, there's also memory expansions you can get for it. Uh, for those people that don't want to actually open up their Amiga and just add some RAM to it, um, you can certainly do it from here as well. So. There's that, and uh, this is a, uh, an Amiga mouse. This is a, a, a new one as well from Amiga Kit. It's a pretty old mouse. There's no mouse here. All right, so this is the underside of the Amiga, and uh, the 1200 and the 600 have what's called a trapdoor expansion slot, and it's basically a plastic uh, sheet here that uh, you can pop open, and um, there's a uh, an interface port here as well. And this is where the, uh, the accelerator board expansion actually lives. This is a Blizzard 1260-060 expansion board. And uh, this big beast here is the actual 060 CPU. And you might be wondering why it's not heat synced or fanned. Um, so for those people that don't know, the 060 CPU actually runs cooler than an 040. And a stock one running at 50 megahertz doesn't actually require any fan or heat sink. Uh, it's only when you start overclocking and uh, you know changing, swapping out the crystal and, and putting in a uh, you know, more powerful oscillator is when you really not start to think about needing some kind of cooling solution. But um, this runs rock solid without any type of fan or heat sink. Um, here is a uh, 72 pin SIM, and this is the 64 megabytes of fast memory. Um, I can actually upgrade this to 128 as well. We can put a 128 um, meg SIM in here as well. This expansion here is uh, an optional expansion where you can add a uh, SCSI module to it. And uh, that's quite nice if you wanna get a, a, a very fast ultra wide SCSI type solution for your A1200. Um, so yeah, this is the Blizzard card. It's actually, a, it's an absolute beast of a card. It, it runs really well. 
and uh, no issues at all and it's super fast and you can't really see that very uh, very well but there's a, a, a battery under there as well for, uh, for setting your clock and all that kind of stuff so yeah what I'm going to do now guys is take off the screws and show you the insides and uh, show you what we've got under the hood alright guys so we've uh, unscrewed it and flipped it over I'm going to pull the, the case off here and then when you lift this up there's the uh, LED connectors for the uh, power and the hard drive this is the uh, keyboard and basically this ribbon just pops out like this out of this connector here so let's pop that out and this keyboard just comes away so it's quite easy to swap out the keyboard there's no no real issue there and uh, as you can see this uh, ribbon cable or this uh, connector here is connected to this interface on the motherboard so let's pull that off and then uh, we can take this case away and uh, this is the inside of my A1200. So uh, yeah, I just gonna want to show you around here and talk about some of the things we got. First thing is we've got a uh, four gig compact flash or an IDE to compact flash adapter. So this is the uh, 44 pin IDE port. And then there's the uh, compact flash adapter. Um, everyone's got one of those these days. It's really nothing special. Uh, I think every person I know that has an Amiga is running a compact flash solution. This is just a generic four gig compact flash card and uh, runs really fast. Um, underneath this board here, this red board is the uh, Indivision Mark II AGA scan doubler. And um, I didn't really talk about that before, but basically this board um, just clips on top of the uh, Lisa chip, which is the, uh, the video chip that provides the uh, video signal. And then you've got like this ribbon interface that goes out to the back of your Amiga and you have a DVI connection and then from there you can just plug it into a uh, VGA monitor via DVI or a uh, VGA to DVI adapter and that will give you um, basically scan double to 31 kilohertz and give you the ability to run all sorts of cool screen modes on a mon modern um, TV or LCD screen or a monitor um, that accepts those those interfaces so uh, it's pretty cool stuff yeah so I, uh, this is something that I actually really want to get a hold of because uh, over in the States it's 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 pretty hard to get um, a, a good RGB solution. Now what I could have done was get an RGB to SCART connector and um, hook it up to the PVM screen uh, which works fine but um, I kind of want to. And over here we've got the underside of that uh, Blizzard 1260 accelerator board and um, if I zoom in here you can see uh, the Blizzard 1260 on the underside there. This, so this is the the back side of the trapdoor expansion, and um, yeah, so that's uh, that's the accelerator board. Um, these two things here are the kickstart ROMs that can be replaced, and um, this pin header here is the clock port. Uh, I've got a few more expansions uh, coming in, but at the moment that's the setup that I have, and obviously this. Uh, this compact flash is pushing down, or it's not touching, but it's it, it's awfully close to the um, Indivision scan doubler. So um, I've got a uh, IDE ribbon cable coming in to basically move that away a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, the inside of the A1200 that uh, that I currently have. Um, I've got a few more upgrades that I want to do, but it's just a matter of uh, getting hold of the right uh, parts for. All right, back again. Um, I'm just putting the uh, system back together. As you can see, I've actually swapped out the compact flash card with a, uh, another four gig that I have here, SanDisk one. Uh, I've got kind of two different, uh, f I've got a couple of different um, compact flash cards and I'm kind of messing around with uh, a bunch of them at the moment, trying to determine which one actually works the best. And I found that the SanDisk one actually um, has a much better transfer rate than the, um, just the uh, generic one that I have here um, but uh, so yeah I'm gonna put this one in and uh, this is almost ready to go I'm just gonna put the, uh, the cover back on here I haven't put this down yet of course and um, and the, the uh, power supply the Amiga power supply there's no actual switch there's no actual switch on the system itself you have to switch it from the power supply so uh, underneath here We've got a uh, ATX mod. This is actually a modded ATX power supply that will uh, boot up the Amiga. So you flick the switch there, and then, um, as you can see, it's booting up now. And there you go. It's uh, it's already up and running. So uh, this is my uh, 
stock Workbench 3.1. It's not completely stock. There's a um, classic Workbench light on there at the moment. So this is going to be uh, my games partition. So there's not really going to be any productivity type stuff. And I'm not really that interested in how um, you know the interface is looking. It's more about just um, you know getting into Workbench quickly and loading things as fast as possible. So this will do it for us. But let me show you how powerful this uh, system is. Uh, as you can see, we've still got the um, the uh, 64 megs of RAM and 2 megs of chip RAM. But uh, if I fire up uh, Sysinfo, which is um, one of the benchmarking tools that uh, people use on the Amigas, um, it's not uh, very accurate as far as um, there's some issues with it. A lot of the purists uh, don't actually like to use it. They believe that uh, it doesn't work very well. Um, but let me uh, show you... Um, any case uh, the uh, speed that we have here now one thing to note here is this software is very old and uh, I don't remember what year it came out in but this is uh, 3.24 uh, it reports my CPU as an 040 and the first time I ran that I was like what I thought I uh, had gotten scammed in the trade but um, no it's uh, it's just because this software is really old it's uh, it's actually an 060 and I'll, I'll show you here if I click on speed uh, this will actually do the benchmarking As you can see, the uh, this uh, this bar here is an, an A4000 040 at 25 megahertz, and we're running an 060 at, at 50, um, so we're basically two times as fast as an 040 or an, an A4000, and we're running at 38.73 MIPS. Now, this number here is incorrect; um, it's uh, it's not accurate at all. But I uh, just wanted to show you the. Uh, the difference here in performance at least compared to these other Amigas um, so that's uh, that's what that looks like which is uh, pretty good that's that's what you would expect uh, I've kind of looked on the uh, forums and stuff and, and everyone else uh, who's who has the similar board and similar spec 060 accelerated board um, is running about the, at around the same give or take um, but yeah that's that's that and uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Actually, the other thing I want to show you was the uh, drive speed here. Um, this is the speed of the compact flash. It's running at uh, 2.1 meg per second transfer rate, which is it's pretty good. It's uh, it's again that's not entirely accurate. Um, I, I I I believe that the theoretical limit is uh, 2 meg per second, um, but uh, you can get um, add-ons to increase that performance. Um, but uh, that's uh, that's still pretty good, at least anyway. So uh, it uh, certainly smokes the hell out of you know the old uh, ID drives that you you would have in this thing. So um, so that's uh, that's the uh, A1200 setup I got, guys. Um, I'm having a lot of fun messing around with it, and um, I'm uh, in the process of getting some more add-ons and, and and things like that. And uh, once I do that, I'll I'll certainly update. But uh, thanks for watching, and um, we'll catch you next time. Bye for now.